Well, 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 it's almost 2017. I thought I'd end up, end up, end the year with me going through, not all the books, going through a lot of the books that I've read this year and finding out which ones I like the most and sharing them with you. I don't claim to have read a lot of books with the 2016 copyright, but I've read a few books. So let's take a look. I just have a list here I'm looking at. I haven't thought about what I'm going to say at all, so let's just see what I've read and what I want to talk about. Okay, here we go. So, I'm looking. So far I don't even see any books that are 2016. Oh, okay, this is a good one. So, this first book I'm going to talk about is called Beyond Words, What Animals Think and Feel by Carl Safina. It really changed my ideas a lot about animals and i had been a vegetarian off and on over the years, but it kind of pushed me back towards being a full-on vegetarian. I do still eat some yogurt, dairy products, but I'm trying to minimize that. This book really, yeah, it changed my ideas about animal intelligence, about what is possible with animals, and it kind of just knocked me off this kind of prideful view of humans as the greatest animals, the greatest show on earth. So I highly recommend this as uh, if you're interested in science writing, which is one of my favorite uh, categories of books. So this is one of the best from this year. Carl Safina's Beyond Words. Check it out. Moving along. Neil Strauss's The Truth. That was pretty good. It was kind of a follow-up to his other book, The Game. It's kind of him str struggling to maintain a relationship with, I think, his wife or his girlfriend. But he's trying to do that, and he finally breaks it off and he tries all these alternative relationships. It's, I think it's a little, it kind of gets a little windy and it doesn't have the full on narrative flow that it could have, but it still has a lot of insightful ideas. You may want to check it out if you like anything related to relationships, um, attraction, things like that. It's very interesting. A lot of insight there. Moving along. Um, oh, okay, this is a good one. Throwing Rocks at the Google Bus by Douglas Rushkoff. It is a book about economics and prosperity and growth and how these, uh, these massively successful companies like Uber and Amazon and so on, how they've taken all this, m this money out of the system and they just lock it up and it kind of slows down uh, prosperity for everybody else. So. It gave me a lot of ideas that I'm still working on, actually, uh, my ideas about money. I'm, I'm, I've actually become more politically, I don't know if politically involved is the right word, but more of an activist anyways, in terms of economics and alternative systems. So I'm really looking into that. This is a book that really spurred me in that direction. And I think it's one of Douglas Rushkoff's best books. He's an author I've been reading for since the 90s. and. He always has interesting insights and different takes on things, so check that book out. It's still, I mean, it just came out in, what, March or something, February? It's still very, very, perhaps even more relevant now that we're entering the Trump presidency and all our tax dollars are going towards these things that we may not necessarily support. So even if Trump hadn't won, you know, I think the national debt, the enormous national debt, our enormous military expenditures, it's uh, it's disturbing how much of our money goes towards these things that are really destroying us or not even helping us at all. So this is a book that I think can give you a lot of ideas about how to change that or at least start breaking that down using local currencies and other uh, methods. So check that book out. And then about the same time, a novel came out. I didn't read a lot of novels this year, at least very few 2016 novels. I read a few other classics and science fiction, but the, this is one of the few, Gone with the Mind by Mark Lehner, who is easily one of my favorite uh, novelists and fiction writers. He's, he took a break from fiction writing, or at least from novels. Yeah, I'd say he took a break from about 1997 to 2012, which is a huge amount of time. And I really missed his writing, but he returned in 2012 with a novel. And then this most recent one, Gone with the Mind, which is sort of a pseudo memoir and it's uh, it's different like all his books they're they're all different from each other but they all have that same 
kind of flavor. The first, I want to say 25 pages or so, are very uncharacteristic of him because it's told in the voice of his mother who actually he interviewed for that part. And so it's really kind of her writing at that point. But then around 25, 25 pages in, maybe 50, at some point he takes over and it's, it's just another great Mark Lehner novel. It does things that no other novelist does and he's, he's wonderful. I look forward to every book that he does and I read it the instant I can. So check that book out, Gone with the Mind. Moving along. Uh, I kind of want to recommend Daniel Klaus's Patience. It was good. It, I don't know. It's I wasn't as blown away as I wanted to be. It was it was worth reading though. If you like Daniel Klaus, if you like comics, I think he's a little better at the short form, or at least under fifty pages. But it's still a good read. I enjoyed it. Moving along, let's see, two thousand sixteen. I read a lot of older stuff, so I'm, I'm skipping all that. I'm limiting this just to two thousand sixteen. That did not come out in 2016. Mm, yeah, I'm not going to talk about that because I didn't really care for it. Um, I guess I'm going to include this. Yeah, why not? James Gleek's Time Travel. I did a review of it. You can go back and read it if you want. But it does have enough in it that interested me. And time and consciousness is really one of my my favorite subjects. I love to read about it and hear different ideas about it, whether it's philosophy or science. And this James Gleek book was, it had some interesting ideas. It wasn't perfect and definitely in it. He's written better books, but it was, it was worth a read. Oh, this one I have to include. Uh, I just did a review of this. It's one of my very recent reviews. The Attention Merchants by Tim Wu. It's an amazing book on media and advertising. You have to read this book. You have to read it. It's good, good. Check it out. And, oh, finally, I think the last book that I'm going to include, no, actually, no, the second to last I'm going to include is Wonderland by Stephen Johnson, which I also did a review for, but his books are always a delight. So I, I have to include that one. It was, if you're interested in history or science, technology, and not just the past, but where it's going, it's... His books are always insightful. I think insightful is the word I used a lot in this review, haven't I? Because uh, I like new ideas and new ideation. It's what I enjoy most. So I read a lot of nonfiction books more than fiction because I just find the ideas a little more packed. So that's where my focus is. But uh, yeah, Wonderland, you got to read it. And then finally, I'm going to review, or not review, I'm going to include uh, this book, which I haven't completed. But it's War No More. It's an anthology from Library of America, one of my favorite publishers. Three Centuries of American Anti-War and Peace Writing. This book is astonishing. It's such a good collection of, of uh, pieces. I call it pieces because some of them are essays, short stories, poems, all kinds of things, photographs. And I'm about 75% through. I, can, I read it in bite-sized chunks and then I'll come back to it every now and then. And I'm, I've gotten so many ideas for political activism, for education, which is one of my favorite subjects. So uh, I, I've just been blown away by the quality of the pieces in here. Some of them I knew already, like Civil Div Disobedience by Thoreau, but there's also a lot of great pieces that I was not familiar with. Martin Luther King Jr.'s Beyond Vietnam speech, which is awesome. I read it, I haven't listened to it, but I really want to listen to it now. It's on YouTube, about an hour long. It's it's amazing. It's still so timely and relevant to us. It's, it's amazing. I mean, we're, we're not at war in Vietnam anymore in the U.S., but we're, we do have troops in other places and we have ongoing uh, military issues, we're nuclear issues, and so on. So this book is so relevant and it inspires me and it just makes me want to be so much more active in changing our systems so that we're not constantly disenfranchising people and funneling money towards billion dollar nuclear warheads and four billion dollar jets that you know so we can kill more people so i love this book i i mean their anthologies are always great they have a lot of them that are about like war reporting uh, civil rights things like that this is this is a little different war no more the idea of an anthology about peace writing 
and it goes back quite a ways. I, I guess I'm going to talk about this more, so I'll, I'll just hold off, but it's a great book. You have to get it. It's, it's essential. It's so good. Um, yeah, it's, it's like 700 pages of amazing writing, really good stuff. Okay, I think I've said enough for this review. But yeah, that's my year in review of my absolute favorite books. I left quite a few out that are not my favorites. You can check back in my other book reviews if you want, or if you don't want, then what are you doing? All right, I'll talk to you later.